So when I was invited to come to conduct this concert, we knew that uh, we would program the premiere of Jimmy Lopez's new piano concerto, Ephemerae. And uh, we were discussing maybe creating a program that connects with the Americas, and so we, we talked about Dvorak's New World Symphony. And so we had room at the beginning of the concert for something to open. And of course, there are many, many great composers from across the Americas, and there's lots of ideas. But one of the ideas that I suggested was to perform Jesse Montgomery's coincident dances. Um, Jesse Montgomery lives uh, and works in New York. Um, she's a brilliant young composer who's building a big body of, of work. And um, I've performed a few of her pieces, and one of them is the coincident dances. And it seems to me that this connects nicely to our program, because in in the Dvorak Symphony, we hear his impressions, his experiences of being on a new continent. With Jimmy Lopez, we experience the sensation of smell. That's what his concerto is about. And with uh, Jessie Montgomery's piece, she wanted to give an example of the sounds of New York City. So if you go for a short walk, you hear all these different sounds. You hear, you hear uh, samba, you hear mbira, you hear um, techno, and you hear classical music. And she mixed it all together in a series of dances. Uh, each of these pieces on our program is interesting because the composers have tried to capture uh, senses in a way. So with Coincident Dances by Jesse Montgomery, the sensation we have to dance, it really is something that comes from deep inside us. And we can dance to all different kinds of music. And she captures that by creating music that makes us want to dance and move, you know, she just, she just writes the music and you feel your body starting to, to, to swing. I think particularly here in, in Brazil where dance is such a part of the culture. A ideia realmente foi foi do Javier Periana, o pianista espanhol, e ele fez a proposta de um concerto para piano e eu falei imediatamente que sim, porque eu amo a primeira musicalidade de Javier e o toque dele e a capacidade que ele tem para a sutileza para realmente tirar do piano tantos timbres, cores. Então eu fiquei fascinado com a ideia. When you approach a piece, a new piece like this one is something really, really special. You open the score and you don't know what's going to be. So, of course, I knew Jimmy was thinking about my approach, my way of playing, my sound when he was composing the piece. But even with that information coming from his side, it was, you know, it's like open a new book and you don't have any single reference about what's going to be. In this case, of course, the name, Ephemera, is giving you some kind of clue about what's possible. It's about smells, it about, it's about different kind of smells, spices. With all these ingredients, you put everything in a cocktail, you shake, and you have this beautiful piece that Jimmy has created for Orquestra Sinfónica do Estado de Sao Paulo, London Philharmonic, Philadelphia Orchestra, and Oslo Philharmonic. So this is a beautiful commission by four amazing orchestras in the world uh, for this beautiful and amazing piece by Jimmy Lopez. Um, o tema em si, o título do, piano, do concerto para piano é Ephemery, não? que significa como uma coleção de coisas efímeras e está inspirado em fragrâncias. Eu sempre fui fascinado pela sinestesia. Sinestesia é uma, um tipo de, uma condição onde as pessoas associam involuntariamente é, dois sentidos ou mais. Por exemplo, se você vê uma cor e imediatamente sente um cheiro ou 
ver uma coisa e escuta um som. E é, tem associações assim interessantes que, que nem todo mundo tem, eu não tenho, mas é, já escrevi uma peça sobre o tema, mas neste caso quis me inspirar especificamente no, no, no senso de, de olfato. Né? Ao final, realmente, o mais importante é a música em si. Né? Então, a pessoa que vem escutar o concerto não precisa realmente entender tudo isso, porque tudo isso é uma fonte de inspiração para mim, como compositor, para criar sons. Né? Então, não é uma condição realmente, necessariamente, se a pessoa percebe uma história completamente distinta, é tudo bem para mim também. With Jimmy Lopez, um, he wanted to, to try and create in the orchestra the sensation of smells or, or evoke smells, and he does that in, in many different ways. F at the beginning of the first movement, uh, which describes the blossoming of spring, um, he, I, I find that the space between the sound is as important as the sound, because it's like, it's like you're picking up the first sense after the winter when well, you don't have snow here, but when the snow disappears and suddenly you feel uh, the, the, the blossoming, uh, I think for the audience, when the orchestra plays, when the piano plays, it'll be like, you'll be picking up the sense. So he plays with it like that. O segundo movimento se chama a Floresta Primigênia e são cheiros mais tipo madeira e tons mais escuros e, e o movimento é mais lento. E aí aproveitei realmente para eh, explorar, não, para explorar a, a capacidade de Javier de, de tirar essas cores do piano. O último é Spice Passaris. Jimmy uh, like, usou essa palavra para definir isso. Intoxicating. I agree with him. It's intoxicating about the rhythm, that structure of seven bars, that uh, main thing from the timpani all the time, and then the piano, the clarinets, the woodwinds, the bassoons, the oboes are getting into this um, beautiful melody uh, with that Arabic color all the time. Um, this is like a second layer, but the first layer is all the time the timpani with this motto perpetuo, with the same rhythm, with the seven bars, once and again and again. And in the middle of this, these beautiful colors, these beautiful passages, with that amazing and outstanding cadenza at the end, uh, before the intoxicating finale. Well, I think that when you listen to Dvorak's New World Symphony, um, you have a lot of different possibilities as, a, as a, an audience member, as, a, as an interpreter. Um, you can just let it hit you as abstract sound, as just you know, this very beautifully uh, conceived set of sounds uh, and melodies. Melody in, in Dvorak, you know, is incredible. Or you can appreciate 
the complexity and the beauty of the construction as a symphony, you know, the, the, the musical construction. Or you can move into maybe the storytelling. Um, and for me, if I connect a man from Europe traveling to North America for the first time in, in, a, in an era when travel took a long time and you experience things in a different tempo, I've, I find myself connecting it with um, the spaces of the Americas, of the mountains, of the rivers, of the forests, um, of the seas. Um, and so even at the beginning, it, it feels like somebody waking up in a new, in a new continent. Um, and of course, that waking up could be literal, but maybe it's also, um, uh, it's also an analogy for new perspectives, new experiences, new horizons. And in the first movement, we move from a dreamlike world at the beginning into something that does have an element of fear. There is agitato, you know, something in there. Um, and the, and the, the first movement has a driven energy, maybe the, the, the fear or the apprehension of something new that you're experiencing. And then you have the, 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 the calm and the beauty of some of these melodies that he, he picked up and he turned into his own. And in the second movement, I always imagine looking out across uh, a mountain range and then singing something very personal, thinking about home, looking at this landscape, but being very personal. In the third movement, I imagine um, a dance that he observed, maybe. Maybe from the indigenous peoples, maybe something else, but that uh, it's, it's got this feeling that maybe there's a group dancing. And in the final movement, he takes all of these experiences and he starts to fit them together to create a new narrative. And by the time we reach the end of the fourth movement, we have arrived in a new key. So we're in a major key. We, we start in a minor key. And I feel that he has, he's managed to take all of these new experiences and impressions and to open up a new future for himself. So it's a, a symphony, if you want to see it like that, that's also about dark to light, about opening up new worlds.